Hello, welcome. So this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a while and uh, it's kind of a bit of a how to best use these two products, the Glossier Brow Flick and the Glossier Boy Brow together for some natural and fluffy looking brows. So the Brow Flick retails for $18 and the boy brow retails for $16 but there is a set where you can get both of them together for $30 instead. I have both of these in the shade black and I'm sure there are like a good amount of reviews on this bad boy so I'm not going to get too into it. Um, I do kind of want to detail this brow flick a little because honestly it's kind of hard to work with. These are just some like haphazard strokes and supposedly you're able to get really light um, hair like strokes but like this doesn't look that hair like. It does a little but like it, it'd be really thick in my brow. I have to be really really careful to draw like the tiniest line I possibly can. Okay so what you will mistakenly do the first few times you use this product is draw hair strokes like this but what you want to get is hair strokes that are teeny tiny like these and there is definitely a learning curve and I've been messing around with both of these to see how I can get that nice glossier brow look um, the most easily so I have some be I, I have some clips showing me using these and since then I've gotten a little bit better. I've gone back and forth between how the brow looks with just this, just this, and then how they look together and I think the order of which you put on either the brow flick first and then the brow gel does make a difference. This is a great brow gel adds a little oomph to my brows but it looks really really natural so for those no makeup makeup days this is perfect. This product is not, it doesn't feel to me like a no makeup makeup product. This is a lot of effort to work with and you can mess up really really easily so you have to be careful. And I really find that this looks unnatural if I wear this just by itself. Um, you can kind of see in the clips but my brows are quite light. My skin is quite light. So if I draw using just this brow flick, there is like high contrast between my hair, my skin, and this. And it looks super, super obvious that I have fake drawn on brows. So then I would definitely generally not recommend using this on its own. Usually what I like to do most nowadays is I will, if I'm feeling extra, I'll like fill in with a pencil roughly first and then I'll brush up with the Glossier Brow and then finally I will use this to fill in any sparse areas and I think that gives me the best result. Um, I think I did it a little bit choppily here so it doesn't look as ideal but today I've gotten a little bit better and so I have maybe like one or two hairs that I drew in here and then mostly a bunch of fake hairs down here because my real brow ends about right here with like one extra scraggly hair down here so you can kind of see yeah you can definitely see the like fake hairs now. Um, I did the same on this side. I'm not sure if you're, I'm going to be able to capture it well, but that's mostly what I use it for because my brows end earlier than I like. I just draw in tiny, tiny fake hairs near the end, but it is nerve wracking because if you accidentally put too much pressure down, it's going to look super obvious and there's not really an easy fix, especially if you've drawn on like two good hairs already and then you frick up on the third one, it's really hard to like remove and fix that. 
Another thing I've come across is when I was experimenting, I would try doing the brow flick first and then putting the brow gel on after. And what I find is that it kind of like clings where I put down the flick. I think you really have to wait for it to dry enough first. Otherwise, it'll kind of cling onto the brow gel as it passes through. When you're brushing through where the brow gel meets the brow flick, it can kind of move the product around. Let me get this to focus. So here is like a freshly drawn one. And then here I've gone and like brushed over with the brow gel. And you can see that it's kind of gone all blurry and it gets a little gummy even or like muddy and the product kind of combines together to form something that really doesn't look like a hair at all. So I would definitely avoid using the flick before the gel. I really really don't like the end product of that and I also would not recommend using the flick alone unless you already have like great brows and just need to fill in like two sparse areas. I think I've perfected like the use of these two, which would be just to go in with the brow gel and then make the tiniest, tiniest hair strokes only in the places that I am missing hairs, not in any way trying to fill in or add more color to my brows with the brow flick. That doesn't really work that well. Even if you make like five perfect little hairs, it still looks kind of obvious because um, if, it, if it doesn't match up exactly with the consistency and like color of your other hairs, it, it'll look um, out of place. So I feel like the fewer fake hair strokes you can make while achieving your end effect, the easier it'll be to make the entire brow look like natural and have those hairs blend in. I think from afar, these look pretty good. Even of clubs, these look pretty good. I did a decent job with my brows today. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. I know that there are more brow flick type and brow gel type products on the market and I do want to try them out eventually but I will keep using these and see how they go. I um, definitely had to go through some trial and error process with these so hopefully this will minimize yours. Thanks for watching.